The gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Raskin, is now recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks to the witnesses for their service and the testimony. In an emergency, every minute matters. Vice President Pence escaped right-wing insurrectionists chanting, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence, by one minute on January the 6th. The order to deploy the National Guard to the Capitol did not come until nearly two and a half hours after the Capitol was first breached. That was at 4.32 p.m. on January 6th when Acting Defense Secretary Miller gave verbal authorization for the D.C. Guard to deploy to the Capitol. Yet Major General William Walker, the commanding general of the D.C. National Guard on January the 6th, has testified he was not informed of this authorization until 5.08 p.m., fully 36 minutes later. As a result, the D.C. Guard did not arrive at the Capitol until 5.20 p.m., almost an hour after the initial green light was given. Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Pyatt, how do you account for this 36-minute delay in transmitting the order for National Guard troops to move to the Capitol? Congressman, Secretary McCarthy, our records show that he called at 435 after receiving that approval at 432. There are discrepancies in the log and all the timelines as we merged all the reports. I can only account for that the troops were going through their final stages of boarding buses and getting ready to go. But what they did was really a, a Herculean effort to remission in that amount of time and be prepared to now go to meet a whole new mission of riot control at the Capitol. Okay, yeah, but I'm not talking about the troops here. I'm talking about the 36 minute delay between uh, when Walker received authorization and when the authorization originally came down. Well, let me let me put it this way. Um, the, the documents received by the committee uh, suggest it's unclear who finally told Major General Walker that he had approval to send the guard to the Capitol or when that occurred. According to one document obtained by the committee, Army Secretary McCarthy personally notified Major General Walker at 4.35 p.m. that he was authorized to deploy. But according to the D.C. Guard's own timeline, this directive was relayed to Walker by Army Chief of Staff General James McConville. So, General Flynn, whose job was it to inform Major General Walker that he could deploy the Guard to the Capitol? Congressman, by authority, it would have been the Secretary of the Army. Well, how do you explain the discrepancies in these accounts from the Pentagon and the D.C. National Guard? Congressman, I, I cannot explain those discrepancies in the timelines. I think as uh, various timelines got merged, uh, there's minutes off. Well, do you, how do you explain that 36 minute delay? Congressman, I can't explain that. What I do know in our timeline is that 1702, the buses began to deploy to the Capitol. That's when the movement started. Okay, so that would have been 30 minutes after uh, the Acting Defense Secretary Miller gave the verbal instruction. Do you think that that 32 minute delay is uh, justifiable or acceptable in terms of getting the DC National Guard to the United States Capitol during the most serious uh, siege and attack since the War of 1812? Congressman, I would say that uh, the bus is leaving at 1702 uh, and organizing those soldiers on that uh, transportation in riot control gear after they had changed mission from being merely in crowd control and going from an unarmed force in a non-law enforcement mode to something very different and being put into the middle of a violent mob. Um, I think that that... Uh, accounts for that time, Congressman. General, you closed your testimony by saying we must address the circumstances that allowed this to happen. What circumstances are you referring to there? The circumstances I'm referring to, Congressman, is when I look back at what happened here, there's four things in planning that we could have done and we should have done. Uh, the first one, there should have been a clearly a lead federal agency designated. The second one is we should have had an integrated security plan. 
The third one is, and much of this has been talked about already, is uh, information and intelligence sharing on criminal activities before the 6th of January. And then the fourth one would, would have been, we should have uh, pre-federalized certain National Guard forces so that they could have immediately been moved to the Capitol and had those authorities in place before this happened. Okay, well, I see my time is up. Thank you for your testimony, gentlemen, and I yield back, Madam Chair. The gentleman uh, yields back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it? According to investigators, they insist he was intentionally targeting white military looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black on white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, that, that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, the, where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that January 6th 
is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage ap across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So, um, is white supremacy? It, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to to America? I think that's overblown, and I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.